your life work. When the white man first came to North America, a great part of the continent was clothed in majestic forests. Trees flourished in countless numbers. But to the early settlers, trees were something to be destroyed. Just a west wind span, passing by familiar locations, a place so sweet, with long leaf pine. Take a look around, boys, we're changing stations. Who you gonna meet on down the line? Has the encroachment of the modern world destroyed the creation of authentic folk art? Would Thornton Dial have created the same body of work if he had a MySpace account? Or what if Howard Finster's Paradise Garden was across from a Starbucks? And another Starbucks. Are there really any artists remaining that are not influenced by our pop culture lusting, tech addicted Cosmo world? We'll meet PP. He's a Leland Cypress and he's never even heard of the internet. And more important to this conversation, PP's an artist. Under my feet, baby, the grass is growing all up to my knees. It's been a long, long time. And under my feet. My name is Andrew Dietz. I am the owner of Agri Folk Art Associates. It's an art dealership that I set up to try to capitalize on the art that's being made here today. Well, I had written a book called The Last Folk Hero, which is about folk art and the uh, fading away of the meaning of the word folk. Folk means rural, agrarian, of the people. It means unexposed to popular culture, authentic. And where in today's world do you have that anymore? You could live in the middle of Nowheresville, Alabama, and have a satellite dish the size of this tree and, and get a thousand channels. The problem may be sentience itself, consciousness, and therefore we really needed to find artists that were non-sentient, artists we could really fully exploit uh, and farm. In the pines, in the pines, where the sun never shines, we shiver when the cold winds blow. Well, my name is Andy Kinsey, and I'm a farmer in North Georgia. We run a what they call an agritainment farm. It's um, sort of a, a mixture of agriculture and entertainment. Initially, it was just going to be a Christmas tree farm. Over time and throughout the last four years, we've had a lot of interesting individuals come out here and come up with just really great ideas. Um, the most recent of which is, is art. <laughs> Jonathan Keats and I'm a, I guess a conceptual artist and as a conceptual artist I really don't have any skills as far as making art is concerned. I've never really used a paintbrush or even a pencil for that matter. Now Jonathan Keats is no stranger to pioneering art projects. He's sold futures contracts for shares of his brain. He's translated transmissions from space to create the first extraterrestrial abstract art show. He's even explored the genetic makeup of God, all with an intense focus on process and procedure, self-labeled as thought experiments. A lot of the problems that exist in the art world in general, in folk art, they seem to be particularly at the fore right now because folk artists were always thought of as these naive artists and authentic for their naivete, more so than any other artists were. And now it really is being found that mass media is reaching these artists. You got dealers who are going and finding them, discovering them, putting them into galleries, and the folk art is getting to be folksy. And so I thought, well, Andrew knows the folk art world. I said to him, well, you want to deal in some folk art by some artists who are truly naive and he said that he was interested to hear what I had to say and I said that the answer to the dilemma maybe it was botanical it was a um, baby working with trees right now we're just getting the trees ready to uh, start making some art by putting the easels within reach and um, giving them 
utensils, um, pencils in this case, to be able to make lines and start to explore the artistic process. Really it's a matter at this point of figuring out you know, how do their limbs face and in what ways are they uh, most, most limber. I figure that at least initially I want to have one pencil per tree, get all 50 of them working, and then start to figure out what works best for each of them and work with their um, particular style. Uh, we're starting out with really the standard, the 400 series of um, Strathmore drawing paper, which is relatively small in scale, especially since we have relatively low wind right now. There isn't going to be a whole lot of activity on these limbs. It's really just a matter of um, just like any artist starting out, you start them out on simple paper, simple pencil, and you just sort of see what moves them. Right now I'm just uh, putting tags on the trees, giving them identifying letters. Uh, for the sake of making art, it kind of, it does matter. So I use the letters of the alphabet, A through Z, and then A, A, B, B, C, C, and so on. Oh, this one's PP. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how much potential this guy has, but that sometimes artists will surprise you. I went down Older's house, he lived down the lane. Stuck my foot in a hollow log, out pop lies a chain. Roll on, roll on, roll on lies a chain. Roll on, roll on, roll on lies a chain. Roll on. that we really need to let the artist develop and it's only going to be once we see a body of work that we'll really understand what's going on here. The kind of artwork that these trees could create is, uh, that's really a, a tough question. I, it could go anywhere, I'm gonna go with abstract. To participate in the beginning of a historical art movement is really a privilege. It's nighttime. We can see the artists are still at work. Let's see what Peepee's done. Peepee has done very little. Well, I'm a wife. Give me trouble all my life. Let me out in that cold rain and snow. We're on target. Um, we had a late night last night. Uh, we came back here to the farm, I don't know, about 11.20, 11.30, and we stayed here quite a while. Uh, working with the artists, uh, you know, the thing about uh, uh, non-sentient artists is that they have a lot more stamina than, uh, than us sentient beings, and um, I, I gotta admit, I'm a little, I'm feeling a little grizzled and worn out. We got out of here around 12.30 last night and a lot of trees are set up at that point and now it's time to go through into cull to see what sort of work they did during the nighttime hours. This is pretty remarkable. It seems like with the help of the wind, this tree has turned the page and started a whole new drawing. We got two of them here. When we cull, what we're looking for is art that has come to some sort of conclusion, some sort of finish, and basically taking the piece and um, going on authenticating it and putting it into the sleeve, and then setting up a new pad with maybe a different color pencil so that the tree can get to work on a new piece. To me, minimalism, you know, less is less. Uh, some of it is beautiful. I just believe there's tremendous potential here, and while much of it is being shown, we have a lot more to go. This isn't about trying to, you know, cats painting, for example. This isn't about sort of trying to do some sort of parody or satire on art. Oh, my tree could do that. This is, in fact, really about exploring what these trees do and finding what their language is. And that's a matter of looking at a lot of work by a lot of trees. Who do we have here? This is T. This is the artist uh, I like this. known as T. I like that a lot. Let's see. 
Yeah. To the structure. Mm. That we're getting. Mm hmm. Yes. Hmm. Very smart. Very smart line. And it's very gentle work for the most part because the trees are quite limber and can't really hold the pencil in a very firm way, and because the wind is just fairly gently breezy here. You have these beautiful Leland cypress and something beautiful creating something beautiful. It's a double win. It's a win-win. Look at that. There's a lot of movement in that. Wow, that's wow, really yeah. great. Look at the wow. sort of the, the fierceness of the pencil that's mark. That's really going wild. I remain very optimistic that collectors will love this work. Well, sir, PP and Associates uncorked a Sioux City sarsaparilla and celebrated the release of a seminal body of work. They've even garnered attention from various media outlets. Of course, seems to me, with all this attention, these trees stand to be just as exploited as human folk artists. You know, the issue of exploitation is a troublesome one. Um, instead of trying to fight exploitation, the truth is none of us can really get through the day without exploiting someone or something, and therefore we ought to just embrace it. Is this artist working on this piece since last night? Yeah. Some have uh, suggested that I'm using the agri-folk art movement not only to exploit our Leland Cypress artists, but to try to simply promote uh, my book, and I categorically deny uh, both of those accusations. Well, Mr. Dietz, I guess only time will tell. Would you ever stop to think, say, that PP and friends are feeling the encroachment of the modern world, too? I'm not in love with the modern world. I'm not in love with the modern world. I was a torch driving the savages back to the trees. Modern world has no ways, and I don't mention it since it's changed. While the people go out and the people